talk about a project that is now uh, very much in our, um, our work at the moment. Um, it's the um, Rubens site in Antwerp. We call it site because it's a complex of different buildings and we um, did a, a master plan, master plan for all that area. And I tried to talk about this and then go uh, focus on, on a building we are going to construct over there. Um, I just want to, to take the advantage to, when I with this talk, to, to say thank you very much to my, my team. Uh, Mieke van der Linden, Jonas van Bella, Lara Kins, Margarita Estevez, Vary van Wat, Parois and uh, Bert Schellekens. They worked so hard last days, but also they added a lot of um, uh, good ideas to the, to the final project. And I, I hope they, they see it also as, as their, their project and uh, we're so happy with their work and I thank you, I thank them. Rubens, of course, is one of these um, yeah, artists of the uh, 16th century, which is um, uh, a, a, a cardinal figure in, in Flemish culture. It's one of the highlights um, like uh, Jan van Eyck and Bruegel, and you have Rubens, and then you have the, the three big masters of Flemish painting, and you have many more, of, of course, but he lived in Antwerp, was born in Germany. Uh, his, his parents were um, fugitives because there was so much uh, religious troubles in, uh, in Antwerp, but they came back to, it was born in Siegen in Germany, but uh, they came back to Antwerp and um, soon he developed himself. He worked in different um, workshops, but he developed himself as the, the master. And he, at a certain moment uh, in beginning of 1600, at the beginning of the 17th century, he bought a property. And we have here a kind of aerial view of his place. You see uh, on the left, on the right uh, image, clearly the garden of his uh, property and the houses uh, in front of it. Uh, and that's the house of Rubens. Uh, um, he partly uh, re reworked on one house and built another house next to it. I, I talk about it uh, soon. It's um, at the time of Rubens. This area was still on the uh, edge city land. Uh, uh, um, the, uh, there was very soon already. Uh, an open landscape. It was just on, in between these two areas at the time of, of Rubens. And he particularly chose this place for, for that reason also. Uh, the importance of landscape um, became more and more important in his life. And uh, you have to see his final paintings, which are really fantastic painting. Fantastic paintings. Uh, they're all landscape paintings, actually, that he just made for his own pleasure. You know, it, he had he had worked um, um, all over Europe. Um, I come back to that. Uh, uh, enormous, uh, important commissions he had, uh, for instance, for um, for the. Ma Ma Maria de Medici in Paris, but also uh, the banqueting hall, the ceiling of the banqueting hall and at watch at, uh, 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 in London, he did the ceiling, but he had also uh, already 
very soon as a young artist uh, contacts in uh, Italy. He traveled twice to Italy and it might have been that he would have stayed because he was becoming a star in Rome, but uh, because his mother was very ill and he came back to Antwerp and that became uh, here his place. Um, and you see actually two, two houses uh, connected and then um, the left one uh, we called the, the Flemish house and the right one, the Italian house. It, 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 you have to know that these houses are mainly a reconstruction. There's very, very little original at these as, as it is two structures, uh, some vaults in the cellars. Uh, they they were rebuilt. There was there was enough um, documents of uh, how his house really was. But for instance, the Flemish house is nearly completely rebuilt in the in the late forties, and uh, the Italian house is 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 actually mostly in nineteenth century. Um, uh, construction, but there is still real uh, um, architecture of Rubens on the site. Mm. Uh, the central photo, the the portico, uh, is an, is a, is true uh, true Rubens design. You have you enter uh, in between the Italian and the. Uh, Flemish house, and then uh, you come on the inner court that you see on the left picture, and then uh, you're, you have this uh, arcade, this portico uh, in front of you, uh, like a uh, triptych, and uh, looking to the garden. The garden is, uh, was immensely important for Rubens and uh, for many people. Uh, of his generation, but also the generations before. They all have read uh, Vergilius and, and gardening and, 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 and farming was um, important. And at the end of this garden, you have the pavilion, which is also absolutely a Rubens building. Um, this, uh, I can show you a, a painting and on which he's standing with his family next to do this uh, building. So they are, he was an int uh, immensely interested in architecture. He was interested in everything in literature. And in, uh, of course, uh, he was a painter, but he was, uh, he had a collection of uh, uh, sculptures, antique sculptures also. And, uh, um, uh, um, and, 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 and he was truly um, related to the also to the antique culture, although he was one of the uh, leading artists of Baroque, but uh, Baroque in the sense that it's um, uh, um, uh, making the movement into the classical uh, um, ideas. And um, so this we this is a, an image of our of, of our master plan plan you see um, in the front the the square in front of the house where the way we would like it we would like it we would with the square at the moment is is, is not in a fantastic uh, condition and design we would like to keep a pavilion of Stefan Bale you can see the rectangle and between the trees that we really would like to plant there uh, to keep it as a garden, as, an, as, a, as a park pavilion, but um, the city, they are not, they are not planning to keep it. Uh, I could, it was built um, some 10 years ago as a, a ticketing and a bookshop pavilion, but um, it didn't function so well. And um, so they don't, don't want to keep it. You see many things on this uh, scheme. Um, you see uh, uh, the court where I was just talking about, you see the arcade, you see the pavilion, but in the back you see on the left side also um, uh, 
16 and 16 bit beginning 17th century building that uh, that's the call veneers of it was the this was the the house of the archers uh, uh, and they were friends of um, of uh, Rubens uh, they were the uh, people who um, gave a commission to Rubens to to the uh, the famous painting, which is in the Cathedral of Antwerp, uh, 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 the Descendants of the Cross, I think is a good English. But you see two, two uh, you see two new buildings, um, one on the, the left side. There, I'm going to talk a lot about that one. And uh, one at the really end of the garden, that one, is at the moment not, um, it will probably build, be built, but uh, it's hopeful, hopefully it will be built uh, later. At this moment, uh, it's not uh, yet commissioned to us, but it should be really a, a, an ending building, a totally at the end of um, the, um, of the garden, so also of the garden of the, uh, uh, called Veneers House, and it should be a, a, a three-story building for uh, exhibitions. Because you know the Rubens House owns uh, uh, an important collection of Rubens um, paintings, but also paintings of his contemporaries. And of course, we have to wait, work later on on the on the climatological conditions of the Rubens House, which is not yet done. But still, this old building will never be top uh, climatology uh, and uh, on on the uh, climatology uh, building, and that um, has to happen in this new pavilion, so they can easily have. Uh, can lend a painting uh, and, and that's really necessary. So, um, and now uh, on the, the building, uh, you see on the, on the right there, over there, that's the, the, the new building we are going to erect. We have all uh, the permit uh, condition. We just finalized our, our dossier um, for um, yeah, spec its specifications to to uh, to uh, look for an uh, entrepreneur who is going to erect this building, so it's really uh, uh, on on his way on on its way. Um, again, the same image that gives you some kind of idea of uh, the total ensemble. Uh, uh, the, 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 the Rubens house with the inner court and the arcade, but the garden, I have to say a word to, on the garden. Also the garden will completely, uh, uh, completely with, uh, rebuilt. Uh, there has been lots of studies. You have to know that at a certain moment, this whole area was full of buildings. Uh, there are still photos of in the beginning of the of the 20th century, there was, there was no garden. They were uh, uh, demolished. There was a, a design of a garden, but it's not really uh, a, a, a strong design. Now there has been a lot of, of work done on studies on, on what could be this garden of uh, uh, Rubens. And this also will be, this garden will also be totally new uh, um, planted, uh, and this, and, and of course, uh, I told already, it's extremely important also in the in the in the mind of Rubens this garden. Um, uh, he really, in, in this place, he really wants to, to create his own universe, and and with with with. Uh, inner court, but also with his garden, with the, the way his house was referring to Italy. He was uh, uh, for a long time in Mantua. He, he was, uh, he knew the work of uh, Giulio Romano very well. And <coughs> sorry, 
when you look at Arcade, you 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 really you really think about Giulio Romano. You really you really think about his mannerism of uh, of Giulio Romano. Of course, it was also in the development of Rubens an enormous moment in his life when he was at the court in Mantua because he met Galilei. He was probably uh, um, yeah. Uh, there when the fantastic music of Monteverdi was played there and uh, uh, um, yeah so uh, uh, you can also see uh, this kind of um, uh, I try to, sh to show it here he had this uh, kind of um, he built it to, to the old house a kind of rotunda uh, in which he placed his uh, classical sculptures, his collection of classical sculptures. So uh, it's really, you know, um, uh, um, an image, not an ordinary image, was a physical uh, um, presence of his, of, of the universe, of his, of, of his, of his mind. Actually, this place. But we built this work here, this building here on the on this site, which is Hopland, Hopland. and Hopland now became a, you know, a really commercial center. But it was a possibility on, to erect a building there, and people will enter this area um, and discover this area as a kind of campus, uh, and uh, so the in this building. There will be ticketing. There will be be a bookshop on the first floor. There will be a cafe. Uh, but what is what's extremely important is that it's not only an, uh, not only the entrance uh, to this complete um, area. It's also um, on the top levels the Rubiniano. That's a study center. Of Rubens, which does, which uh, scholars from all over the world are are coming to uh, to Antwerp to study the the the, the work of Rubens, <coughs> the time of Rubens, and so on. Uh, and <coughs> for us, it was a very uh, a, a inspiring uh, element, and and. We got our idea about the building uh, because of the idea that there had to be a new Rubinianum. There's a very difficult building that we at, at the moment there that we will demolish, uh, which is now hosting the, the, the Rubinianum. But there was the simple ins inspiration that we knew that uh, uh, Rubens owned small buildings over here in that area existing buildings in which he uh, has placed his collection of books. He had, uh, uh, Rubens had a, a, a wonderful collection of books. He was uh, a, a contemporary of uh, Plantin, Plantin Moretus, the, the, the famous printer uh, in Antwerp and, uh, and uh, Rubens himself uh, had a, had a his collection of books. So that was very inspiring of us, the idea of the books, the Rubinianum, the study center, to develop a very basic idea for the building is coming. Um, uh, once again, Rubens himself and his young, young wife, uh, uh, Elena Fourmont, uh, he has, was ma married twice, uh, and his son, uh, Peter and some body of the household and animals as well, fountain. Uh, but you see, he really was fond of his uh, piece of architecture, the, the, the pavilion he, he has built in his garden. Uh, Romans himself with his first wife, Isabella Brandt, he wrote very touching letters when Isabella Brandt died to his friends that he'd lost his uh, loved wife. 
But uh, he got married again with Hélène Fourmont, uh, the daughter of his friend. She was 16 years old and he was uh, 53. But, and they got uh, four children together. So um, it, was, um, it was also a family man. He was a, uh, well, uh, uh, he was leading the, 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 the intellectual elite in Antwerp, but he was at the same time and, and it's, Sometimes in his work also you can you can see that uh, very very close very uh, uh, to his family and what one has to understand that it was his studio where he worked the Italian house but also his family house and we we take this in account and uh, yeah. Uh, a master plan of the part that now will be developed with the garden with our our building and uh, and uh, the connections between what is there. This part here will be hopefully later developed. There's still the, this building we absolutely want to demolish. It's also in, in a very bad condition. Uh, the arcade, uh, you see that we are, uh, our building is just, just a bit on the, on the right side. You see that we want to, in the future, uh, a more uh, delicate building than the one which is completely close to the uh, much much further in the back of the uh, of this place. We want to do this new exhibition space nearby the Colvenier's house uh, and and create also a garden and the new garden uh, which is now. Uh, developed you know. the house um, the pavilion and our new building you see it's a, a quite large building uh, um, uh, with the ground floor uh, entrance and then you go this way to the house in the garden and go back to that building first floor is a cafeteria the Rubinianum uh, is the is the uh, study center of Rubens, and on the top floor there's a back office of the museum of the Rubens house. There's also a small gardener pavilion, which is also a reconstruction, uh, but uh, uh, which is um, uh, done in the also in the beginning of the 20th century. So all this ex except to the um, the arcade and the pavilion is reconstruction. Um, as I said, there were houses, this, it was countryside, but there were little houses in that area. And uh, Rubens had, had a huge collection of books. He was also friend of Plantin Moretus, uh, the, the big uh, uh, in, uh, printer of books in Antwerp, also a, a very important figure, uh, a cultural figure, and where they were good friends. And Rubens himself had a big collection of books over here. And that was a big inspiration for us the, to, to work on this building here. Yeah. As you can see, the, uh, there's it's a very, um, um, uh, simple idea of two walls of books. Uh, uh, is the, that's the basic scheme of the building, um, uh, which on, on the ground floor, the entrance area, cafeteria, but all, all the time we had these books uh, on both sides, also the bookshop uh, uh, as well, and there are Partly here are compactus, uh, compactus, uh, and uh, here are uh, service spaces. And on the, on the ground floor, we have this Rubens uh, experience uh, uh, under uh, 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 the basement, the, the um, Rubens Experience Center, which is here, and which is mainly a thing with digital projections and things like that. People can go there, um, learn about um, 
about the life of Rubens. This will be a story uh, really connected to what meant this place for Rubens. On one side, it was his working space with his studio, with his assist assistants on one hand, and uh, his family place also with his uh, wife and children. Rubens had uh, made beautiful, uh, intimate paintings of his children. Um, uh, um, and um, the story of his family was also be told in this um, uh, experience center uh, here downstairs. Um, this is uh, a section of the building. Yeah, as you can see, it's um, uh, on the street level. You have this um, um, entrance area with a desk and with uh, book uh, shelves and bookshop over here, uh, leading to the to the garden, leading to the house, and then you have cafeteria here. Uh, on the first floor with a terrace overlooking the garden, over seeing the pavilion, uh, but we try to make it as intimate as possible that it's not disturbing too much the, the garden. It, uh, it has a very green uh, uh, sides and uh, people will not be very visible, but they can see uh, the garden. Uh, very important are the staircases. It's really a thought. I try to explain it later on the model. Um, the, the staircases, which is something uh, which which is uh, we 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 did a, a kind of diagonal position of the staircases. You will see it later uh, as a kind of reference to the diagonals in uh, the paintings of Rubens. I, I, I tell about it later. Uh, upstairs, Rubiniano, but you see walls uh, are, are the basic, um, uh, well, the, the, the basic figure and the in-between space is uh, entrance, study rooms and so on and so on for the Rubinianum. Yeah. Um, well, maybe uh, this is underground, the, 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 the disposition of the uh, experience center, uh, the, but this is the entrance area and you see you enter like this, uh, the desk, and you go diagonally to to this space, to this to to this total uh, universe house uh, garden. You do a diagonal do a diagonal movement to this space. The same in the vertical sense. You see the position of the of the um, staircases. They are also doing. A diagonal uh, movement, and um, it's it, it's kind of reflection of of um, of Rubens. Rubens uh, was somebody as well connected to uh, and extremely interested in antiquity and, and clear um, schemes, uh, but. He was also the one uh, in his painting who introduced the idea of movement uh, and uh, particularly the, these diagonals, I will show some images of it. Uh, and we did that also with this round staircases and then the diagonal uh, evolution of the staircases. This kind of reflection of this contrast between uh, the academic scheme, Cartesian scheme, and the, and the movement, as well in the way you walk through the through the building. The upper floors, with uh, you see the ending staircase here, and then the Rubinianum study centers. But each time, these two facing walls of books, 
on every level, even on the last uh, level where the uh, uh, back office of the of the museum is with also meeting rooms. Um, in this uh, project, uh, facades uh, were quite uh, important uh, because we had to make an ouverture to this whole site, and um, we um, we 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 were looking at the Rubens and his his work and his drawing, his paintings, and um, what for us was so prominent in his work. Of course, Rubens uh, had a relation to Michelangelo before him. He has seen the work of Michelangelo in Rome, but it's, it's this manifest corporality in his work. Uh, you can see here the tendons and the muscles and the things. And somehow this, this corporality stayed in our mind in, in developing uh, uh, the presence of the buildings, actually. Um, also, uh, we, we do it always in our work. We are still very acad acad academic architectural work with proportions. In our case, three, five, and seven. And, uh, and we, we did this re uh, uh, with very rigorously in, the, in, in this project as well. Um, uh, but I think uh, it doesn't talk that much about it, but um, Rubens was interested in architecture. He, uh, uh, the only things he really built at all is the arcade and the, and the pavilion. But um, he, may, he wrote a complete book on architecture on the, of, of the uh, the uh, the palaces of Genoa. He did a long essay on that, which was published in his times, and you can see that these buildings that he admired uh, had also this quite strong um, ratios, and uh, that's what we also. I was talking about these diagonals. Uh, they asked me, "What did you? What what did you?" Um, yeah, struck you some, uh, the, the, the question was asked to me. Um, and I said, it's this, these diagonals in his work, this body of the Christ. Uh, this is his extreme, on the, on the right, his extreme and uh, famous, maybe the most famous Rubens painting, which is hanging in the cathedral in Antwerp. The, Ascendant of the cross. I don't know the English uh, 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 precisely the English uh, thing, and also this kind of um, you know, mourning women, uh, also the Christ. Again, this uh, way of dividing the the the, sp the space by this uh, diagonal body of of Christ. Um, something. Not we did not we didn't do it not explicit, but something of this uh, uh, was in our minds when we were working on the project. Uh, here you you, uh, you can see it, uh, for instance, with this uh, uh, staircases. Uh, also, this movement that is uh, an evolution. Uh, this uh, all the public zones uh, the entrance area, the uh, experience center, the cafeteria, and partly there's a public zone in the Rubignanum where uh, the public can come and see uh, documents and drawings and, and so on on Rubens. And um, yeah, and um, you see in these models, this, um, yeah, uh, the, the, the tendons, um, uh, this idea of what we call corporality with these uh, screens of columns uh, on both sides, on the street side, on the left, on the, on the garden side, on the, on the right. 
They are important. They uh, are also filters of light. We don't want to look too much to the outside uh, on the street side. It's a quite commercial uh, center. I have nothing, no, no, nothing, no problem with that commercial area, but we, we didn't want that the, this, the atmosphere of this commercial area enter too much into the building. So we used this colonnades, these fine colonnades. Here they are double, they are, here, uh, they are uh, only singular and double. <coughs> and there will be a, a way of treating light that enters. This is the north facade, <coughs> facade which is very open, but there are, um, there are a whole system of curtains here, into, uh, inside curtains, but we wanted here to open the facade quite prominently uh, overlooking the whole area and the garden also for the people studying here or for the people of the cafeteria with the cafe and the terrace here the entrance area there's a there's a, a gallery small gallery leading to the house here and um, this is uh, there's a, some 3d uh, images of the building. Uh, it's concrete, it's a uh, complete concrete columns, concrete um, uh, plateaus, and uh, it's, it's, it wants to be uh, a kind, the idea of the ouverture, the house, to be a kind of ouverture to an, uh, an, this, this more intimate area of the garden and the house of uh, Rubens. So this is what I wanted to tell about this building uh, and my story ends here. At Brickworks van der Mortel we make high quality bricks, slips and clay pavers in unique colors and sizes. From our new brick lab in Belgium we support architects in the UK and around Europe. As a partner, we collaborate with the architect to transform his vision into reality with an open mind, technical knowledge and tailor-made solutions. As a family-held company, we remain accessible at all levels, which makes our company extremely customer-focused. In all those years, we never lost our core values and stand for sustainability, quality, teamwork and, of course, our passion that we would love to share with you.